So of course, um, CAR T-cell therapy, which is the one most people think about, and other cellular therapies are approved in a lot of cancers, and CD19, which is the target for the earliest and you know earliest approved therapies, um, is on CLL cells, um, and there's extensive study on these cell therapies in CLL. Um, and I'm talking about cell therapies, allotransplant, I think the role is diminishing because of the availability of things like CAR-T for CLL. Um, and we don't have any approved uh, CAR-T or cell therapies for for um, CLL. Um, however, I do think that the uh, outcomes, uh, you know, in the studies with it continue to improve with time. And so that's really going to be most useful presently for a population of patients who aren't benefiting from our oral targeted agents anymore. So I don't think it's going to replace, you know, initial therapy with BTK inhibitors, initial therapy with venetoclax and an anti-CD20, or what we hope will be the, the uh, coming approval of combination fixation treatment. But when you get patients that are you know, their CLL cells are resistant to both our best classes of drugs. Um, we have novel agents that work there, investigational agents, reversible BTK inhibitors, things with novel mechanisms. But, you know, we expect that the CLL would become a survival limiting disease or that people will die of their CLL. And I think cell therapies really has the possibility or potential to change that. So I'm excited to see as that technology improves and more people are able to benefit from it, that the select group of, of people living with CLL who aren't going to benefit from these oral targeted agents or combinations um, can really go on to receive this and have very um, good benefit. Um, and I think, you know, that's going to be exciting to see in the future. Whether or not it's used earlier in treatment, I think, is still something we have to look at.